Okay. So at the moment, uh, there are many papers published on the microbiome, even their own journal, probably. Uh, I think in some uh, papers it's overhyped. There's a, I have a Twitter feed, and sometimes this guy, he's named Jonathan Eisen, UC Davis in California. He has a little Twitter thing, overhyping the microbiome, and each month he gives out a prize for that, like a Twitter prize or something. So just because you find something and it changes, I think doesn't necessarily mean it's important. And uh, however, I think that we need to be, we need to know everything about the microbiome because we carry it around, it, it, it colonizes us when we're very small, when we're babies and maybe changes a little bit through our life. It's like having a different organ. It's like having another liver. There's so many, many metabolic processes happening in, in there. And uh, really we don't understand much of the chemistry and the, and the pharmacology that goes on in the microbiome. However, be aware that when the microbiome disappears, it comes back. You, know, you always have bacteria in your mouth. You can get bacteria from your friends and from your partner. Every time you touch something, you're getting some bacteria. And it's possible for the microbiome to be changing or reconstitute itself. I think the number one thing with the microbiome is going to be your genome, your genetics. So remember that you produce all kinds of antigens and secrete them in the mucus layer of the gut. Blood group antigens are actually related to the microbiome. So each person can have a slightly different microbiome depending on what blood group you are, what tissue type. Next thing is what diet you have and then whether or not you're exposed to antibiotics and things which inhibit it. So those things, and then whether you caught infections or viruses or had gastroenteritis or something like that. So those things are going to infect, affect the microbiome. Uh, we know that. And in some cases, they will be important. But it doesn't stop me from giving people antibiotics. If they get trouble from the antibiotics, I'm thinking about the microbiome. How can I make it back to normal? So I think about that. But I've treated thousands of people with antibiotics and all those people have said to me, thank you. They didn't say, please give me the helicobacter again, because I was previously better. They say, now I'm better. 